Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Ten Nights of Dreams, a Japanese anthology from 2006 that consists of 10 short films, lasting about 12 minutes each on average. Now these short films span a variety of genres, including horror, drama, and comedy. It's based on a series of short writings by Natsume Soseki that were serialized way back in 1908. Now, I do not want to say too much about each story, because it's best to go into this as blind as possible, but I do want to give you a feel for what to expect, so I'm going to give you a little taste of which each story has to offer. So we begin with a short prologue starring Arika Toda, the girl who played Misa in the live-action Death Note films from 2006. Prologue only lasts a few minutes, but it, it get things, uh, gets things rolling. Now, the first night of dreams showcases a cyclical supernatural love story. So you have a guy who's looking over a woman on her deathbed, and the woman asks him a favor. She wants him to bury her with a goldfish and wait a hundred years for her return. Now, the lead actress is Kyoko Koizumi, who would later star in Kyoshi Kurosawa's Penance and Tokyo Sonata. Always nice to see her show up in something, so that's the case. The director here is Akio Jisoji a man who has made his fair share of mind-bending films, many of which are difficult to find with English subs. But some viewers may recognize his work if they've seen the film Rampo Noir, because he directed one of the shorts in that anthology as well. Now, if you're at all familiar with this director, the style in this one will likely not surprise you too much. You know, he uses otherworldly lighting and sound design that's very impressive, and the script kind of makes you feel disoriented. It's very good stuff. The Second Night of Dreams is a black and white, mostly silent drama about a samurai who attempts to gain enlightenment. I mean, he has a discussion with the high priest, and uh, he basically sits by himself for mu much of the segment, just contemplating his discussions with the high priest that he, he talked with at a temple. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen some of this director's works, Koni Chikawa, because he directed The Burmese Harp and Fires on the Plain way back in the day in the Japanese classic era. Those are pretty popular, so uh, this guy's made his mark. Some viewers may think that this segment in this anthology is rather uneventful and simplistic, but I think it's pretty good. Not my favorite segment of the bunch, but it's pretty good. The Third Night of Dreams is a creepy tale of a father's relationship with a child. So this guy... Is kind of walking at dusk with a six-year-old child on his back. And he's not really sure the whole situation that's going on there. It's kind of like a real dream, right? Uh, and his subsequent revelations are quite horrific. And this was directed by Takashi Shimitsu, the man who gave us the Juon franchise. And he does a fine job instilling a creepiness from start to finish. Yukashi plays the young wife of the main character, and she previously played... Light's girlfriend in the live-action Death Note films from 2006. So I liked this third story quite a bit. The Fourth Night of Dreams is a good sequence about the recollections of an important event that occurred during a man's childhood years. The ocean finale is the highlight. I'll just leave it at that. The Fifth Night of, Night of Dreams is a non-stop thrill ride, is how I would describe it, that follows a young woman who's riding a horse at night for an Un er, uh, an unknown destination. Mikako Ichikawa is our lead, and I've always liked this actress. One of her more recognizable roles was alongside Ariko Sato in Cutie Honey. She was like her assistant. But her performance here is one of my favorites from her. The Fifth Night of Dreams really kind of ramps up the entertainment value and goes for a, a sufficiently creepy and highly creative mystery that will keep the viewer guessing. I really like the sets, the lighting, and the score as well. There's also a goofy yet unnerving monster thing that you won't forget anytime soon. The Sixth Night of Dreams is a weird comedy about the mystical abilities of a breakdancing woodcarver. Yes, you've heard that correctly. Completely ridiculous stuff, but for some reason, I thought the quirky humor worked in this one. Certainly different and amusing. The Seventh Night of Dreams is the only animated segment... It follows a drifter who contemplates his individuality and loneliness on a giant, otherworldly ship in the middle of the sea. Now, the visuals in this are utterly phenomenal and gawk-worthy. Really impressive stuff. The only negative in this segment is that it's, it uses English dialogue. It's the only segment that really uses it much. 
and it's occasionally clunky and distracting in the way that it's presented. So it's a little bit distracting there. But it's easy to forgive that flaw because the artistry and the atmosphere in this are mind-blowing. I love the ending, too. Really cool segment. The Eighth Night of Dreams is a tale of a little boy who finds a large tube-like fish. <clears throat> it kind of goes from there. This is one of the more underwhelming segments, in my opinion, because it's played for laughs, but I did not find it that funny. Uh, it certainly retains the randomness of actual dreams, that's for sure. I mean, this one, this one feels more random than a lot of the other segments, but... I did not find it very interesting to watch. It's not terrible or anything, but probably my least segment of the entire anthology. The Ninth Night of Dreams is about the prayers of a family whose father decides to join the army. Now, our director here is Miwa Nishikawa, who would go on to direct some fantastic films like Sway, Dreams for Sale, and The Long Excuse. She goes for a more like traditional dramatic effect in this segment, while at the same time implementing some sharp editing and time jumps. It works well overall. Again, not my favorite segment, but it is good. You know, I do prefer her feature-length projects over this short film. And The Tenth Night of Dreams is a wacky comedy about a murderer who targets ugly people, but gets more than what he bargained for after meeting a pretty lady. Now, our director here is Yudai Yamaguchi, who directed Meatball Machine and Tamami the Baby's Curse. And our lead actor is Kenichi Matsuyama, who played Detective L in the live-action Death Note film. So that's at least three actors that transitioned from Death Note to Ten Nights of Dreams, like, in the same year, basically. Which is pretty interesting. Now, given the history of this director, it's no surprise that his short film here is really crazy and energetic. It's very creative and fun to watch. I'll just leave it at that. And then we end with a short epilogue starring Arika Toda again. So overall, <clears throat> while there is some ambiguity and subjective interpretation to be had in some of these dream sequences, this anthology really is kind of saturated with originality and refreshing moments that are easy to enjoy. You know, some very talented and popular directors and actors contributed to this as well, which is nice to see. Pacing is on the slow side during the earlier dreams, I would say. But there are a number of crowd-pleasing moments to be had in this. I'll, let, I'll tell you that much. Especially during the, the latter half of the film. So Ten Nights of Dreams is available on Amazon Streaming in the United States. I definitely recommend it. There was an English subtitle DVD release back in the day that I have in my collection. But it's out of print now, I think. And uh, the copies are rather expensive. So check this one out. It's pretty cool and unique. And as always, we'll see you next time.